Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me at the banks of the Bridgewater Canal again. Not the same Bridgewater Canal. Last week's Bridgewater Canal was the original Bridgewater Canal. This is the new Bridgewater Canal, if you can call it that. Anyway, we're going down the Bridgewater Canal to Runcorn. Have I said Bridgewater Canal enough? Let's bimble. This is Preston Brook and it's the point where the Bridgewater Canal forks off in two different directions. One way goes into Runcorn and keeps the name the Bridgewater Canal and the other goes through the Preston Brook Tunnel and becomes the Trent and Mersey Canal. The Trent and Mersey Canal goes through Northwich and Middlewich and Sandbach and eventually ends on the outskirts of Stoke-on-Trent and the Preston Brook Tunnel the Trent and Mersey Canal, the Bridgewater Canal, the Staffordshire Canal, the Coventry Canal, were all designed by a friend of the channel, James Brindley. He's the fellow that got all the water out of the Wet Earth Colliery, using the water that was seeping into the Wet Earth Colliery. He was a right clever clogs. Preston Brook doesn't have anything to do with Preston in Lancashire, apart from where it gets its name from. And in that regard, it has a lot in common with Prestatin in North Wales. It means priest town, Preston, priest town. And the priests they were talking about here in Preston Brook were the priests from Norton Priory. More on that in a bit. Before we get there, we've got to go and see something far more interesting. A place for storing water, not for floating your barge on. Let's bimble. Thank you. 
This fabulous thing behind me is Norton Water Tower and it was built between 1888 and 1892 and the idea was to provide Liverpool with drinking water as well as Holton and Runcorn, Widnes and Warrington. If you're going to build a water tower you want it high up on top of a hill that's to keep the pressure up and one thing that Liverpool didn't have was any big hills it's very flat, it's a bimbleless paradise they also don't have any lakes and they don't have anywhere to have reservoirs the big lake that they could have had to provide water to Liverpool was Martin Mere but they got rid of that didn't they so you might be thinking that they fill up Norton Water Tower from reservoirs around Runcorn or on the Cheshire Plains well no it comes from something called Lake Vernwy over in North Wales it's a man-made lake made by flooding the valley of the River Vermwy, and it's about 45 miles away as the crow flies and if you think that's a long way it was originally built to supply London with water that's right, the big smoke 270 miles away from Lake Vermwy. so they decided against it because it was daft and it was a long way but a fella from the Liverpool Corporation Waterworks by the name of George F. Deacon, he said, Yeah, la, we'll have that reservoir and we'll use it for water in Liverpool, like. He probably didn't talk in a Scouse accent. He was a right posh lad. In fact, it was him and a Lord Kelvin, another posh lad, that took his and Bar Kingdom Brunel's ship, the SS Great Eastern, and laid the first transatlantic telegraph cable. 13,950 miles of cable laid between 1862 and 1884 so I think he could handle some pipes going from North Wales to Liverpool one of the pipes that takes the water from Norton Water Tower under the River Mersey to Liverpool is three metres across that's one and a half bimblers you could walk down it if it wasn't full of water pipes Norton Water Tower is 30 metres tall and 25 metres across and it can hold 650,000 gallons of water and it's very ornate considering it was built to flush people in Liverpool's toilets let's bimble Left too long in the passing time You know what you know Ignored what I read And looked to the bright side So here's to the bad times Forgotten in good lives I will, I will, I will let you down I bet you there are people who live in Runcorn that don't know it's got a castle. I'm always forgetting, and I'm only round the corner. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but I'm into this kind of thing. It's called Holton Castle. And it's in exactly the right location for a castle. On top of a hill. You can see for miles in every direction. You can see Chester and North Wales. And Warrington and Manchester. And you can see over to Wigan and Rivington Pike and all the way to Liverpool. In fact, today, you can see Liverpool Cathedral. The original castle was built in 1071 and it was a Mott and Bailey castle made out of wood. But in the 13th century, they built a lovely sandstone castle here. There's lots of sandstone round here because we're in the Mersey Estuary. And way back before Jurassic times, before the T-Rexes and the Velociraptors, this was all on the equator. But the tectonic plate shifted, 
and we ended up in Runcorn. Did any King stay here? Well, King John stayed here. I like King John because there's only been one King John. Which makes him sound very normal. There's no King John the Third or King John the Eighth. It's just King John. Edward the Second stayed here in 1323 for three nights while he visited Norton Priory. And when Henry Bolingbroke became Henry the Fourth, he bequeathed Holton Castle to his dad, the Duchy of Lancaster, John of Gaunt. During the reign of Henry the Eighth, it became a prison for Catholic recusants. And during the Civil War, the Royalists defended it. A Captain Walter Primrose, he defended it for a number of weeks before the parliamentary forces took it over. And Oliver Cromwell being Oliver Cromwell, he decided rather than let the Royalists move back in, he'd just knacker it. And that's how it remains today. In 1737 they built the courthouse at the front, which is now a pub. In fact, the whole thing's kind of a pub now. It's like a castle in a pub beer garden. So we reach Journey's End, Norton Priory. I bet you think I'm really interested in Norton Priory, just up Kieran Street. And it is just up my street, but I find it a little bit dull. I'm sorry. I've been spoilt. I've been to Basingwork Abbey in Greenfield. Beautiful. Free entry. I've been to Cockersand Abbey. That's in a farmer's field full of bullocks. I said bullocks. Free entry. I've been to Birkenhead Priory. Looks quite similar to Norton Priory. Maybe a little bit smaller. But they've got a church spire that you can climb up. You see the stunning vistas of Liverpool waterfront. And you can look right down into Camel Laird shipyard. And see them working on all the boats. Free entry. Norton Priory, eight quid, well, seven pound ninety-five or eight pound ninety-five if you do gift days, which I didn't do. Anyway, I vented. I didn't want to pay eight quid to get in, but I did for you lot. So let's have some history about Norton Priory, shall we? It's the most excavated knackered priory in the whole of Europe. They've done countless archaeological digs here. Not really found much that we didn't know already. The most interesting thing to happen to Norton Priory happened in 1536. That was when Henry VIII ordered that it was slighted. That's knackered to you and me. He fell out with the Catholic Church because he wanted to marry another woman. And they wouldn't let him. So he started his own church called the Church of England. And he wanted to get rid of all the boring monks and sell off the land that they had the monasteries on. One fella called Sir Piers Dutton, a local landowner, sensed that he might get some cheap land. So he decided to become busy mates with Henry VIII and started making up tall tales about the monks, saying that they were refusing to leave the monasteries and they were revolting. I mean, they weren't revolting. 
I'm sure they were all nice chaps. Monks always tend to be, you know, tinkers. They always seem to have a bit of a side hustle going on. And the side hustle of the monks of Norton Priory was the same as the side hustle for the monks at Birkenhead Priory. They used to ferry people across the River Mersey. That's why the Penny Ferry Pub in Warrington is called the Penny Ferry Pub. Because the monks used to run a ferry service from over here in Runcorn to over there in Warrington. A man called Thomas Cromwell came along and seen that everything that Piers Dutton was saying was rubbish and sorted everything out. He pensioned off the monks and made sure that their heads didn't get chopped off. That's Thomas Cromwell, not Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell would have come along and chopped everyone's head off. Henry VIII, off of your head. Sir Piers Dutton, off of your head as well. Monks, chop all their heads off. No messing about. It would have been a massacre. It'd have been like a Tarantino film. I'd have paid eight quid to see that. The land was eventually sold off to a Richard Brook for £1,500. That's about a million pounds in today's money. And apparently, after he bought Norton Priory, he didn't have enough money to do it up. And he used part of the knackered Priory to dump his rubbish in. Which makes Norton Priory the most excavated rubbish dump in the whole of Europe as well. <laughs>